We're discussing uh, Professor EBM today on covering alcohol withdrawal syndromes, and this is case number two to discuss alcohol-related seizures. So I'll start by reading case number two to us all. You are working the night shift in the ER when a homeless 35-year-old man is brought in by ambulance after a witness tonic-clonic seizure. The patient is sleepy but arousable and is oriented times three. He states that he has had seizures in the past and was told that they were related to his alcohol abuse. He says his last drink was about 12 hours ago. On exam, his vital signs are normal and the patient is not tremulous with a normal neurologic exam. His labs are unremarkable except for a blood alcohol level, BAL, of 112 milligrams per deciliter. So first question. Did this patient have an alcohol withdrawal seizure? Uh, what do you think, Dan? Well, there's no way to tell entirely, but taking the whole history into account, the fact that he has a positive blood alcohol level, a history of seizures related to alcohol abuse, I think that the clinical picture in this case is most consistent with alcohol withdrawal right, seizure. Right. Yes, the time, even the time relation seems just about right. Huh? Seven to 48 hours after the last drink is usually when we see and alcohol intake. Now, does it bother you at all that he still has a measurable blood alcohol level? No, the patients that I've seen oftentimes will have a measurable level even after. That's right. It may be a relative drop. He may have been at 200 or 300 and now is at 100 and then suffered the seizure. So that's absolutely right. And also note that you can have alcohol withdrawal seizures without shakes or tremors or without tachycardia. They can, uh, each of these syndromes can uh, occur independently and don't have to be related to each other. Now, should you treat this patient with benzodiazepines, Dan, and if, uh, if you would, uh, how would you dose them? I would probably treat the patient with benzos. The, the dosing could be either with a long-acting agent like Valium or a short-acting agent like Ativan, two milligrams. Right. Good. There was actually a study. Did you know about the Boston study? where they had a randomized controlled trial of people admitted to the emergency room and they were randomized immediately upon arriving. They had to be 21 or over, had to have a clear al alcohol history with alcohol-related seizure history, and that they had no other immediate reason for having the seizure, such as febrile illness or meningitis or head trauma. And what they did was give uh, the randomized group, the treatment group, two milligrams of IV uh, lorazepam and the uh, control group was given four milliliters of normal saline, both getting four milliliters total IV. And they found that out of 100 people receiving the Ativan, only three had seizures, or 3%. But of the 86 that were randomized to placebo, 21 or 24% had seizures. And this was over a six hour period. The other significant finding was that people getting the lorazepam, a significant number of them were discharged from the ED rather than being admitted. So the, uh, there's two benefits to the treatment that you outlined. So the, that's a very good treatment for that. How about phenytoin? Would you use phenytoin for alcohol withdrawal seizure? I haven't done so this year. I don't, I don't think there's any good evidence that shows that phenytoin is of any use. Right. That's absolutely right. There's no randomized controlled trial to support it. So unless they have a prior history of seizure, and say some structural brain damage, like a stroke or trauma that they need phenytoin, then uh, that's the only time we send them out if we think the patient is adherent. Does this patient need to be admitted to the hospital? Let's assume that he's had a seizure, you've given him lorazepam, six hours have passed, and he's, he's again awake and alert, no signs of fever and so forth. Uh, does he need to be admitted? And what is the minimal amount of time that he should be observed? Uh, Chris, take this question, please. Uh, as I understand the uh, guidelines uh, in a patient where you feel confident that this is an alcohol withdrawal seizure, uh, having a known history of seizures, a short period of observation, uh, like six hours may be sufficient. Um, things that may cause you to admit the patient would be first time seizure, uh, multiple seizures, or uh, other uh, causes if you're suspicious for other causes of seizure, or worsening withdrawal symptoms. So we're going to take a team vote right now. Let's, let's imagine, I think Chris has a really good point. How many of us would admit this patient as we described it? Yeah. In the old days, I might have, but I, I'm going to go with Chris, that actually uh, you can consider admitting them, 
Uh, certainly, you guys have seen folks with aspiration pneumonia, and they still have a low-grade fever after a seizure. Then I would agree, you would admit the patient. But if he absolutely looks otherwise stable, and as described, with some caution, I think you can consider sending these patients home. So that, it has to be with caution, though. I think the other thing is confusion of state. If they're confused after the seizure, then obviously we have to watch out for them progressing to something like delirium tremens. And the final question is, do we need to give them a benzodiazepine taper? I think you folks have answered that already before, that uh, we've actually, in both studies and uh, using the benzos, we don't give them a benzodiazepine taper. So if you decide to send them home, you can't send them out without benzodiazepine. And that's it.